when I was a child, my parents took me to a park where you could drive through and get really close to African wildlife. I remember the monkeys that broke the car's antenna and the giraffe who stuck its head through the sunroof and ate some of the popcorn I had. I was inches away and pressed my tiny hand to its auburn fur. Its black eyes stared back at me. Growing up, it's not like I was obsessed, but I did learn a few fun facts, like how a group of giraffes is called a tower, and how they fight by swinging their heads like maces. I mean, really, does it get more metal than that? So, if you were to ask me what my favorite animal was then, I'd have to say giraffes. That was before my visit to the savannas. While growing up, it's true I had a penchant for giraffes, but I also had a great love for animals in general and wanted to study them. Through hard work and an obnoxious amount of pestering people I'm sure, I was accepted into an internship. This internship would allow me to travel with a group of researchers to the savannas to observe the wildlife like I did as a child, but with more purpose. Most of this internship was fairly uneventful so I'll spare you all the dirty and boring work I had to do just to be able to stay out in the heat. I was miserable, but getting to see so many of these majestic animals in their natural habitat made the venture worth it, not to mention how good it did look in my resume. A few nights into the trip, I got a little antsy. We had rules restricting when we could leave our home base and who we could go with, on that particular night though, everyone was asleep from a hard day's work, but not me. I laid in my little cot, watching the clear night sky above me. It was then that I first heard the groan. At first, I assumed it was one of the heavier set guys snoring, but as it continued, it was a little too consistent. The low reverberating mumbling I hadn't expected to have the pleasure of hearing it. It was the low hum that giraffes make to each other during the night hours. I lifted from my bed, thinking a tower must have been pretty close by for me to be able to hear it inside my tent. Unzipping the nylon fabric, I looked around. I wasn't really afraid as, from what I knew, giraffes were pretty peaceful animals. The tower was actually a pretty spread out group of giraffes and only one was by the tree near our camp. It was the one making the humming noise. It was a quiet night, for sure, but it was odd how loud the giraffe's hum was. Reaching back inside the tent, I pulled a thick and powerful flashlight out. They were heavy duty so we could see great distances across the plains of Africa at night. We had rules against keeping the flashlights on inside the tents, as they might melt the fabric if left on one spot too long. Giraffes and other wildlife out there have really good eyesight, but we certainly did not. The beam of light guided me across the brown savannah floor as I made my way to the lone giraffe. I was worried it might be humming as some sort of distress call. It wasn't eating out of the tree it was by, and I was concerned it had gotten hurt. Getting close enough, and with the assistance of the flashlight, I could see small scrapes peppered around the giraffe's legs. They were flesh wounds, blood still glistening in the powerful light. I was upset that such a gentle creature was attacked, but it wasn't surprising. Not until I found the culprit laying at its feet. A lioness lay battered on the hard ground, there were no cuts on it, but I could see several spots where the bone was broken and patches of flesh were caving in. Its head was a mess and barely recognizable, like it had been hit by a bowling ball or mace. Stunned, I scanned the lioness with the flashlight over and over, and I saw that she was still breathing. The giraffe's breathing was much louder as its snout peeked into my view. It was huffing air 
as it moved along the lioness, taking in her scent as it trailed along. It was reminding me of another animal, but at the time, I couldn't put my finger on it. The giraffe trotted around the lioness until it got to the head. There, the giraffe buckled its legs to lay on the ground like a resting camel. I stepped back a little at this point. I had never heard of behavior like that before, so I was awestruck and curious to see what the giraffe was doing. I thought of the tree above it and how giraffes evolved to be able to reach previously unobtainable food. That's what we thought anyway. Now, I'm not so sure. There were a few more sharp exhales from the giraffe, and then it opened its mouth. Its long tongue wriggled, taking in the night air. Its mouth kept opening wider and wider. I heard a click, and stunned, I watched as its jaw unhinged. The lower portion of the jaw hung loose, with the brown fur stretching and revealing the skin was thin and cloth-like. As the giraffe brought its head forward and placed the jaw around the lioness's head, I was at a complete loss for words and actions. More and more, the lioness disappeared into its tunnel of a neck. I could watch the shape of the predator moving along the giraffe's body, which is undulating like a snake. Flashlight shaking hard in my hand, the beam dancing around the giraffe's deep dark eyes that paid the light no attention. It was only a matter of minutes until the lioness had vanished completely and lost its form from falling into the giraffe's stomach. It didn't even pay me any mind as it brought itself back up to a standing position. The skin that was holding the two halves of its jaw together started to tighten bringing both pieces into one again with another unnerving click and a low hum. Then, it walked over and grabbed a few leaves off the tree, like it was something to wash the lioness down with. Too stunned, a state of complete bewilderment washed over me while I was attempting to comprehend what I had just seen. I didn't hear the soft trotting behind me, or the soft wafts of breath that painted my neck with a speckling of saliva. The hard blow to my side and my head, however, was harder to miss. My body crumpled to the floor, and my world became hard to grasp, covered in a thick haze and a constant ringing. Any attempt to move my body yielded little results as if my brain wasn't able to send out any signals. My vision was coming back to me in waves as I could see brown stick thin legs standing by my head that lowered to the ground. There was a click, one that was all too familiar, and my vision of the night sky became blanketed by a thin sheet of pink. Hard teeth lifted my head like a shovel and I could feel the soft slime covered tongue feeling the grooves of my face. Still struggling to move, the giraffe pressed on and my head reached into its throat. It was tight and wet. I was being pressured from all sides. Arms were violently shaking at my sides as I tried my best to even panic. The saliva that was covering my body started to burn away at my clothing. I thought about the burning sensation, hard as my fingers did their best to navigate their way around the flashlight in my hand that I'd somehow managed to hold on to. Angling it as best as I could, I pressed the face of the light to the surface of its throat. The hard metal pressed into my hip, but that was a small price to pay. I was starting to lose consciousness, and if a lion's claws weren't sharp enough to shred the giraffe's insides, and certainly, nothing on me would have been. I needed another way, and the flashlight was all I had. The smell of the giraffe's stomach was absolutely foul, 
It stunk of soiled food and battery acid, but the smell was being replaced by burnt flesh. I was moving along, but I was able to keep the beam of the flashlight pressed onto one point in the giraffe's neck just long enough for it to sear. I remembered that when snakes have trouble swallowing their food, they tend to regurgitate it, so that became my plan. The giraffe attempted to lift its head, but with my weight, it was unable to, and instead, it rose up off its feet. I could feel the muscle relax around me, and faster than I'd been swallowed, I was spat out. Covered in saliva, and smelling like I might have come out the other end, the giraffe appeared to have lost interest in me. So, there I laid. The initial blow, and the burns its interior acid left on me, were enough to keep my body on the ground until sunrise, and even then, only when my research team found me, was I able to become mobile again. They picked me up and shuffled me into the tents, and after lots of water and rest, I was back to stable consciousness. Nothing much was left of the experience. Well, other than a deep purple welt on my side, which hid three broken ribs. I was sent back home the next day for proper medical treatment after having a long discussion with the lead researcher. I told him everything about what happened, and while his face was plastered with confusion, he didn't immediately write me off. I was told, once I get better, that he'd consider bringing me back on, maybe even paying me. I think the last bit was a joke. He did leave me with a bit of advice, however. He told me to keep this to myself until I could help him research it further. It was unfounded and went against anything we'd studied on giraffes up until that point, and it'd look pretty damning if I made wild claims like that. I'm not worried about looking silly. I have the proof of that night all over my body. Nothing near our base camp that night would have left a bruise like this and not have killed me. I don't much care for giraffes anymore. Since then, I've read lots of interesting stories about creatures and even just animals not behaving the way that was acceptable to us. The world is full of terrifying and bizarre oddities and nature can produce absolute monstrosities. I like how gentle and kind giraffes were supposed to be, but now that I've seen what they're really like, what they really do, I've had to reevaluate my opinions of them. I must say though, as of late, I've been increasingly interested in snakes.